In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Okay, have a seat. We used to talk about the parables. We will continue about the parables after next week. But this week, today, we will talk about something very beautiful that happened last week. Jesus came to, he came to the Jordan River and he went into side of the water, in the water. And who was there by the Jordan? Uh -huh. St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist was there. And what did John the Baptist say to Jesus? Do you remember? Can you baptize him? Oh, John the Baptist said, I am the one who baptizes everybody. Because everybody was coming to be baptized. Do you remember when you were baptized? So Jesus came to be baptized. And John the Baptist said, Lord, you should baptize me because you are the God of the heaven. You are coming to be baptized from me. You know what they said happened when Jesus entered into the Jordan River? What happened, Markela, when Jesus went into the Jordan River? A dove came down uh -huh. and of the voice of the Lord spoke. Uh -huh. And said, this is my beloved son, uh -huh. with whom I am well pleased. That's awesome. That's in the Gospels. But something else happened that is not in the Gospels, but it's in our hymns. What happened when Jesus went into the water off the Jordan River? The water Reverse. started flowing backwards. Have you ever seen a water of the river going up the hill? No. 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 So when Jesus entered into the Jordan River, the river was so amazed that the waters, instead of going down the hill, they started going up the hill. Defying gravity. Defying gravity. Why did they defy? How could something defy the gravity? Um, not because, because Jesus was the creator of the river right the river was in awe and the sound came and said you're my creator you're coming inside of my waters okay so this was an amazing thing that's why john the baptist said why am i baptizing you you should be baptizing me because jesus is god and john was just a human being and he was baptizing other people but he wasn't expecting that he would be baptizing God himself. Why did Jesus come to be baptized by someone like John? Why didn't Jesus say, well, forget about this. I'm God anyway, so it doesn't matter. Because he had come to the world to save humans through humility, right? Because God belongs where? In heaven, right? God is glorified by the angels. God is in heaven. God is spirit. But what did Jesus do when he became a human being? He became a little baby, right? Mm -hmm. So that is showing us that he loves us so much that he became one of us. And then he continued to become humble and humble and humble. He was baptized and then he healed everybody. He multiplied bread for everybody. He went into the garden of Gethsemane and he prayed there and then he was crucified. He allowed people to crucify him so that he will go into heaven. So he will rise again and go back into the heaven, right? So Jesus allowed John the Baptist to baptize him because that's the best way and the best way is humility. And he needed to be baptized. There's another reason why Jesus went into the Jordan River to be baptized. Can you remember? This one is a little harder to remember. But Jesus went into the Jordan River because everybody else had been baptized already. And what was happening when they were baptized? When somebody's baptized, what happens to them? 
They come into the church. That's right. They are in, they are invited back to church. But they are also holy. Thank you. They become holy. What does holy mean? Um, it means humble. Mm, yeah, that's the part of it. But actually, the word holy means it means complete, clean, pure. Okay. Can you remember that? Mm -hmm. So yeah, when prophecy. when when you go into the Jordan River and you are cleansed, you are purified. What does it mean? What were you before that? Just a normal human being. Just a normal human being who was not very clean, right? So when when you when you play outside in the dust all day long, and then at the end of the day you come, you have to go to bed. What does mommy say? You need to take a shower, right? So that the dust of the day can go away from you. And what happens to the dust? Now it was sitting on your skin, and then you take a shower. What happens to the dust? It goes into the water, right? The water takes the dust into itself. But with Jordan River, it wasn't the dust that the Jordan Jordan was cleaning, but what was it cleaning with the baptism? You. It was cleaning the sins of the people, okay? So when people were going into the Jordan, they had all kinds of sins. So they were repenting and coming to John and saying, I'm sorry. And then they were going into the Jordan River and the river was cleaning their sins. And like the dust from our skin goes into the water, that way also our sins or people's sins were going into the water. And then comes Jesus. Does he have any dust, any sins? No. No, he's pure and he's God. And when he went into the dirty water of the Jordan, what happened? When something very clean goes into a dirty water, what happens to it? <coughs> it gets dirty. So he took all the sins of all the people on himself. He cleansed the waters of the Jordan River. So that after that, everybody who is being baptized, they also can be cleansed with the same water. So when we baptize somebody in the, in the church, and the font in the big tub, right? What do we say? This is the same water of, of Jordan River. So it's, it's, it's purified by Jesus' baptism. And it takes our sins and cleanses us. And Jesus takes those sins upon himself too. This is a little tough to remember. But can you remember a little bit of it? Okay, yes. And even though he takes the sins, he doesn't do the sins because... That's He's right. So holy. You are absolutely correct, Catherine. You're absolutely correct. He takes the sins and he kind of makes them disappear. Can you believe that? He takes our sins and makes us clean. Okay, very good. So let's pray together again and then go back to the church. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father.